Hey guys, today we get to talk about the nine most expensive cards in Portal. This time I'm going to do it in reverse. Again, if you have Portal lands, they tend to be a dollar or two. So that is a great, great uh, thing to find out. If you play during any of these sets, Portal, Portal Free Kingdoms, their lands are, I think like six to $10. The regular ones, the Portal Second Age are two to four. These are one to two. I think the print run was much bigger. But what is true is tutors will always be good. Tutors that do the same as other tutors with different names, the tutor that is less available in terms of print run will be much more expensive. So Sylvan Tutor is exactly the same as the Miraz Green Tutor that has not seen a reprint. It's around $10, but this one is $50. Two big differences here. The Mirage Green Tutor is very good, but it's uncommon. This one is a rare. Now the other tutor that is less good than Demonic Tutor would be Cruel Tutor. So Demonic is one in a black. This one is two in a black. Search your life deck for any card. Shuffle your deck and put the card on top of it. You lose two life. So. It's kind of like Vampiric Tutor. Actually, it's more Vampiric than Demonic, but it costs more than Demonic. So, eh, still very, very valuable. Still 26 bucks. Uh, it's not, I mean, Portal was a fantastic set if you could go back in time and just pick these off because these were not considered good cards. Why would anyone play this over Vampiric Tutor? Why would anyone ever play this over Demonic Tutor? They want it. But in EDH, you want as many of these tutors as you can as you can have. So Sylvan Tutor, Cruel Tutor, all of these are very, very valuable. Uh, next, we have a good eat, Natural Order, which was reprinted in Visions. I know, I think I don't know which is a reprint, and I think this is the reprint because it's like a core set, right? Uh, Natural Order has been, has pretty much savagely taken a beating after it has been reprinted. I think it was reprinted in Eternal Masters, if I had to guess. If I had to guess that little eternal symbol right there is the beginning of the downfall. Great card. This is not my favorite artwork though. I love the Visions one, the original Vision one, just a card frame. It just feels good. It just feels like, an old magic card that I used to play with when I was a child. Portal was a fantastic time in my life. Uh, elementary school to middle school, uh, most of the elementary, I won't say like fourth grade is when I played a ton of Portal, Portal Second Ages. Uh, I bought most of my cards from either Radio Shack or the Magic the Gathering store. We had the Magic the Gathering, oh, it was a Wizard of the Coast store. We had a Wizard of the Coast store in a mall. It was next to JC Penney's in the Exeter Mall. Pretty cool place. Next, Devastation, destroy all creatures and land. This is, has been slowly ticking up. A lot of unique, so people wanna be unique. They want their decks to be special and you know, people ask, oh, hey, cool, cool land, cool Devastation, the artwork is beautiful. And that's why you see these older cards, uh, these more classical cards, in my opinion, going up and up in price because people wanna play with the cards they were uh, they had when they were younger, but they don't want them to be so bad. So if this is just like one part of your 99, it's okay. It's not the worst that can happen, right? Is it a, as we will see with the later cards and not all, all that great. They haven't stood the test of time in terms of power level. This one is very good. I think it's great. It's Wrath of God and Armageddon in one. So, hey, you know, it, it's just one of those cards that makes people upset. But now you do have to pay seven at sorcery speed, so somebody's going to counter it for, I mean, I'm pretty sure. Winds of Change. This one has recently spiked a ton in price. It's something that I, Winds of Change, I don't know where it, originally I think it came from Unlimited. I'm not sure if this card's on a reserve list. I'm assuming it is not, but it could be. So that huge price spike, Winds of Change, is not due to it being on a reserve list or not. It's due to the new gods, right? So it its price spike is either the Locust God or the Scorpion God, I forget which one, where each player counts the cards in his or her hand, 
shuffles them back into his or her deck and then draws that main card. I'm pretty sure it's, it's a Locust God because you get a 1-1 one, one Locust for every card you draw. If you're going to draw six cards after playing this, you get six Locusts and then you put in the Coastal Piracy, which is another very strange card to go up in price because it's a Locust God. Then you're going to draw even more cards from those little guys. Although Biden, the uh, Trident, the... Uh, Fossil's Trident or Fossil's Biden is very interesting to speculation. Very, very cheap due to the fact that it was a game day promo, I believe, and was reprinted in Commander. But you never know. Personal Tutor, this card was a $30 card at some time. It was... It's interesting, right? And in many ways, it's not as good as Mystic Tutor. But it does not need to be. Uh, these tutors, anytime you can buy a tutor, buy a tutor because it's good. Uh, it's incredibly valuable in EDH. It's, it's incredibly, it's just one of those things that will always be true no matter how long magic continues to go on. Tutoring for a card in the EDH is what everyone wants to do. You want to fetch, crack the land, grab a shock land or a dual land if they can afford it, right? $500. Underground Sea says hi, and then Tutor for another card. I mean, that's typical turn one play for a blue player. And maybe they don't have the Mystic Tutor in their hand. Maybe they have a personal tutor. All right, now let's talk about the what I remember most from Portal is these crappier cards. But back then, this was considered a super amazing card. Two in a black, whenever the Mercenary Knight comes into play from your hand, Choose and discard a summoned creature from your hand or destroy it. So you're going to give up one card. It has to be a creature card for plus one, plus one. That was considered absolutely pushed. So a 4-4 four, four for two and a black, that was insane. Like I know people who just were like, oh, I can't beat that. I can never beat it at the kitchen table. Like they just, I don't know what to say, but creatures were not that good back then. Uh, they were just not. This was considered one of the strongest creatures in black that you could play, and it was in Portal. The other, the most expensive card in the Alliance was not Force of Will. It was Bodovering Horde, which is a 2 and 2 red for a 5-5. Five, five. You discard a card at random. You don't get to choose what you discard. You discard a card at random, and that was the best card. That was worth like a playset of Force of Wills times 2. Now, Ebon Dragon... Uh, is a beautiful, I remember, so Ebon Dragon, the next one, Mist Dragon, I remember just falling in love with the artwork, this is classic, I would buy these out, I would have no issue buying these out, because I just love the artwork, I love, I would love to have in my office, I would love to have 100 copies of this in my office as a decoration, like, do you know how much, so I went to a gala the other night, and this artist, who's not even that good or famous, I'm not going to tell you what gala it was, uh, he was selling his paintings for $1,000, not paintings, photography, all right? It was a charity event, yes, I understand that, but I was just like, eh, would I rather do buy 200, 300 copies of this card or buy a painting of a bird that is you know, for charity? I did buy the painting for the bird. I was on a date. You have to buy stuff when you're on a date for Anangala. Anyway, it wasn't a hundred dollars. I exaggerate. I think it was five fifty. Still not the best. Am I going to hang up in my office? Probably not. I would buy this. This is my favorite card from Portal. Favorite card from my childhood was this one in Dragon Whelp. It has not stood the test of time. It is. I remember just loving this card. I loved it so much, and I don't currently own a. Co Actually, I own Miss Dragon was the one that I loved. This is the second one. I don't know, there's just something very unique about it. I would not be uh, unwilling to buy this out. You know, depending on how many copies I can get of it. I think it's a beautiful card. It will never be good. It just, no one's going to pay 5 in blue for 5-4 that cannot block, can only block creatures who are flying. That's not powerful. But back in the day, this was my, this was like my blue eyes white dragon. This was my strongest card in my deck. And I just remember playing it every time and be like, yeah, I got him. 
this and Panther Warriors. I played Simic before people really wanted to play Simic. And I was like, oh, Panther Warriors, six toughness. My perfect curve was Panther Warriors into the uh, Cloud Dragon. Or Mist Dragon. I think Mist Dragon was also six. And that just couldn't be beat. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.